Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're going to be talking about the switch statement inside of C++. You know, I thought I'd switch it up a little bit. <laughs> But first, you gotta check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So when it comes to creating a switch statement, what's going to happen is you're going to say switch put parentheses, and then put curly braces. So it's the same exact structure as an if statement, which looks like that, but the actual functionality is a little bit different. So what's gonna happen is where you would normally put an expression inside of an if statement, we're actually just going to put a variable. The example I gave in an earlier video was age, so we're just gonna say int age, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to get that from input. So we'll get C in and store that inside of age, and we'll just put an output just so people know what to do. So let's ask the audience what their age is. So we can put that variable name here in the switch. And then inside of here, we have case labels. So we make a label for different values. So we can say the case where the age is, hmm, I don't know, 13. And what we're gonna do is we're going to do a C out here. And I'm just gonna be very informative and tell them that their age is 13. I know that's real helpful, but <laughs> you guys get the pick. You, once you understand how the functionality works, you can use this for different things. This is just a, a silly example here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say break, which says we're done with this case. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that break keyword here in a minute. Then we'll say case 14. Yep, so the, the, the reason I don't like switches is because they're not super useful or versatile. Like. If you're going to have more than a couple of options, you have to put every single option as its own case. And then you can do a catch-all using a default. But overall, it's kind of complicated. And I'm not the biggest fan of switches. I think they are pretty to look at when you have a few options. So if you have a menu a selection, for example, you could basically say case 0, case 1, case 2. That would be nice and pretty. And we're actually going to be using a switch statement later for that, I believe. So you'll see it later on for that example. But for, for the general purpose use, switch is not the most useful thing, and you'll see why. <laughs> the first reason why is it has to be an integral type. So first let me compile just to make sure I got everything working, got all the code working. What is your age? I need a semicolon, and there we go. So it, she, it seems to compile, but that's because age is an integral type. It's of int. But if we do something such as make this a double, well now it's not even going to let us compile. So that's just really not useful that the type has to be an integral type. It makes it very limited, but we'll deal with it. We'll go with an integer and we'll give it a try. So let's compile and run. What is your age? Let's just say our age is 14. You can see we hit the case 14 and it says you are 14. Thank you, computer, you're very helpful. <laughs> so that is how a switch works. Now let's first talk about this break keyword. This is actually not a required keyword. So it's it's silly because if you don't put it there, we're going to have an issue known as fall through, which is bad. It's not a feature, it's it's a it's an unfortunate occurrence. <laughs> so if we compile this and run and let's say our age is 13, what's going to happen is it says you are 13, you're 14 and then catch all so it actually falls through and hits all of these print statements. So when you don't have a break statement, it's going to fall through and hit all of the cases until it has a break or a return. So if you don't want to use a break, you can use a return, such as in the case of main, we can return negative one, or we could return zero, whatever number you want. Zero means everything works fine, negative one means something went bad. So re a return should work as well. So in this situation, if we say our age is 13, it's fine, so that is one way you can do it, but generally you're going to see the break keyword here. So you're always going to want to make sure you put that break keyword in there, even if it's the last one, just as a best practice. In other languages such as C-sharp, the break is actually required, which I personally like because there's not 
very many scenarios where you're going to want to leave that break off of there. The only situation where you might not use a break is if you combine cases. So for example, if you want to combine 13 and 14, you can get rid of all of the content of case 13 and leave it like so. And then you could say your 13 or 14. <laughs> so in this situation, if you put the value 13 or 14, this will get hit. So just to see that, let's go in there and we'll put the value 13. And if we run it again and put 14, you can see they both hit that output. Now one thing you might find interesting with a switch statement is you can actually use it for an enumeration. Now if you guys remember what we did with enumerations, we talked about them briefly when we talked about constants. Some people use them as an alternative to a constant. Other people use them when you just have a series of potential options. So let's go through an example of creating an enum and we'll use it inside of a switch statement. Why exactly can we use an enum? Because behind the scenes, an enum actually stores possible values as an integral type. So it's basically the same thing as using numbers. It doesn't look like we're using numbers, but we actually are. So it's pretty cool. So if you haven't worked with enums, it's nothing too crazy. So don't freak out, just follow along. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say enum and we'll just say, uh, let's go with seasons. And in here, we're going to go with summer, spring, fall, and winter. And let's just get rid of all of this information here because we're just gonna work with the seasons directly. What you can do is you can actually create a new season and call it now and set that equal to winter, for example, which yes, it's winter, it's freezing. And then what we can do is we can switch on that variable now and we're gonna have completely different case values. So let's just get rid of all this stuff. We'll leave that default in there and get rid of these cases. So we can say case and have the different possible case values. So we could say case summer, case spring, case fall, and case winter. Now, because we have a very limited number of options here, we're actually not going to need that default because it's not possible for now to have anything else than these four options. So let's compile, see if I got anything completely wrong. Yes, I forgot to put an S on here. So it would actually be better to probably make this singular. So we'll just call it season. Now before we run this, we actually want it to do something. So we'll just go through the case of winter and we'll do an output. Just keep it nice and simple. And you could do that for all of these, but I'm just gonna do it for winter because I know that's the one that's gonna be hit here. And when we run it, you can see it says stay warm. So that is how you can use a switch statement with an enum, nice and simple. Now I'm also going to try this with what's known as an enum class. It works very similar, but it's a little bit different. I'll typically just put, put a capital S instead of a lowercase s when I'm using the class type. And then you need to prefix these with season, like so, with the double colons. And this just allows us to scope our enum to this season so it doesn't just pollute the entire area that it's defined in, if that makes any sense at all. And then we also need to do that here. So we can say season, colon, colon, winter. Last thing is we need to capitalize this S. <laughs> Sorry guys. Also when you compile this class enum is a C++ 11 capability, so you might need to say standard equals C++ 11. All right, that should be everything. We should be good to go now. <laughs> now when we run it, we get the same exact thing. So this is a little bit different, and I know this video wasn't a tutorial on enums, but it's definitely something I wanted to squeeze in here somewhere. The class enums are just a little bit better just because this summer is only available when we prefix it with season, so it doesn't just make this summer available everywhere. So you can look up the pros and cons of whether to use class enums or just standard enums. That's not a topic for this video.